Hello, everyone, and welcome to the wrap-up session of Black Mentorship, Inc., Black History Month 2023 celebration. I must use this opportunity to thank everyone who has made it possible for us to bring you events celebrating Black excellence and contributions worldwide. Our staff, volunteers, board of directors, and all of you that has joined us in one event or the other. Thank you, thank you. I must also thank my boys and my husband. I have not been able to do much of mom's or uh, wife's duty <laughs> this month. <laughs> and so thank you, thank you, thank you for your passion with me. A big shout out to Ogutaya for their support in making it possible for us to capture memories of our Black Excellence Gala event. Speaking of which, it's now available on URTV Halting. We invite you to tune in and watch the Black Excellence Gala on the following dates and times. I believe Saturday, March 4th, 7 p.m., Tuesday, March 7, 1 p.m. in the afternoon, Saturday, March 11, 7 p.m. So this evening session is in collaboration with the Canadian Caribbean Association of Halting, CCAH. I am so honored to moderate tonight's conversation with Sheldon William, Vice President and Head of Milton Division at the Canadian Caribbean Association of Halting. Our team today is building community integration and bonding. As we wrap up the Black History Month celebration 2023, we feel it's crucial to discuss actions we all need to take to ensure we put the lessons that we've learned throughout this year's celebration to good use and help foster inclusive communities for all people. We're going to have a roundtable community conversation. We encourage you to participate using the chat button. And if you have any questions for our panelists, please, please, please use the QA box. We really encourage that. Talking about participation, we will be giving four. Mm, yes, you had me correctly. $25 <laughs> gift cards to youths. Hello, youths that provide the correct answers to our panelists' questions. So pay attention, guys, <laughs> because <laughs> you don't want to miss this one. And uh, thank you, Ato and Ngozi, for donating these gift cards to us. You guys are awesome. Please be informed that this session is being recorded. Joining us tonight, we have incredible Black leaders uh, here. We have Brian McNaham. Did I pronounce it well? Brian McCallaghan. McCallaghan, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. President of Policy Movers Inc. and co founder of Ginger. Ngozi Ilabuchi, HR professional and manager, Shaw Center. Brian Harris, founder and CEO of the Harris Brand Inc. and Harris Brand Foundation. Ato Amadi, head of vision, youth in diaspora. He's actually in Nigeria now, that guy. <laughs> um, I don't know if he's logged in. I know that um, there was a little bit of uh, technical difficulties, but don't worry, he'll be here. Branda Archibald, research assistant and student at Humber College. And I must add, BMI volunteer. And of course, we do have KD McLean, uh, who is here helping us as well. BMI volunteer. Unfortunately, due to illness, the Honorable Associate Minister Charmaine Williams, Associate Minister of Women's Social and Economic Opportunity, it's not going to be joining us today. She extends her heartfelt apologies for not being able to join all of us here. We really wish her um, a speedy recovery. Share them. Well, thank you all for joining on this last day of February 2023. Thank you very much, Black Mentorship Inc., Evangelina Chima, for putting this together. This is uh, a great way to say to close this month and to open out the rest of the year. 
I think we've all learned, um, and you can tell by maybe the exhaustion on my face, Evangeline looks great, but I'm a little bit tired of mm -hmm. all the events that they cram into the coldest month of the year. Snowstorms and dark mornings is what we choose to celebrate. And let's remember that this is not the end of the celebration of Black history. This is the beginning of the celebration of Black futures. Super excited to have everybody on the line here today. Nice that we're all warm inside. We're not outside dealing with the snow that we had last night. But what I really am looking forward to is, is hearing all the voices from our wonderful panelists. We have a good array of different individuals all focused on making change in this environment, all in different ways, all from different backgrounds, different genders. So I think you know it's, it's exciting for me to be part of this. It's exciting for you, I hope, to be sitting in your chairs and you know partaking in this in this event tonight and i think what we want to do is kick it off right evangeline with a nice video that you guys put together just a little um um uh, shameless plug we actually i was i attended this gala that evangeline mentioned uh for bmi and it was phenomenal the music the food the dancing the mc uh the the wardrobe i felt like i was extremely underdressed <laughs> and, <I was> just, <laughs> and, and what happened is they played this video and I got that little frog in my throat. It was just phenomenal. And um, <clears throat> as TLC says, I ain't too proud to beg. So I asked Evangeline if I can borrow it. So we shared it on our social platforms as well to make sure that we got as much exposure as we could of the great details that are in the video that you're about to see and just highlighting all these fantastic work that BMI is doing in the community. So I'll pass it over to you, Kadeem. I believe you're the uh, you're the MC for the night. So let's go. Where is she? Come on back, peace, folks. Whoa, easy now. I'm gonna be free with God. I've been walking with my face turned to the sun. Weight on my shoulders, a bullet in my gun. Oh, I got eyes in the back of my head, just in case I have. While the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night, that's when I'm gonna stand up, take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. Far across the river, can you hear freedom calling, calling me to answer? Gonna keep on keeping on, I can feel it. In have made it 100 miles to freedom. Would you like to pick a new name to mark your freedom? Harrington. Early in the morning, before the sun begins to shine, we're gonna start moving towards that separation. salvation and I'll fight with the strength that I got until I die so I'm gonna stand up take my people with me together we are going to a brand new home far across the river can you hear freedom calling calling me to answer gonna keep on Welcome to the Underground Railroad. And I know what's around the bend might be hard to face cause I'm alone. And I just might fail, but Lord knows I'll try. Take my people with 
game mode, make sure game mode is on. It helps your PC's performance, but we want to make sure game bar is off because that's an extra process running in the background. Yeah. On top of that, our graphics settings, we want to make sure we have hardware accelerated GPU scheduling on. Where's that coming from? I don't know. I was on mute, so it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. Either. <laughs> <laughs> well, these things happen, technical. They do. <laughs> um but yeah this is really wonderful this is wonderful thank you so much Katie for putting that up I see a couple of notes in the Q&A people saying that the chats um it's not enabled um Kadeem, help me out <laughs> <laughs> not sure what's going on with that but Kedim is going to look into it so please 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 be out with us and before we move on to land acknowledgement I wanted to throw in there that the video that you all just watched actually was put together by our wonderful volunteer Brenda who is one of our speakers today so hello Brenda thank you thank you thank you for that uh, truly, truly, we can't do much as an organization without volunteers like Kadeem and Brenda. And I'm sure so many of other um, members of our team, they are also online. Thank you. Um, Kadeem, speaking of Kadeem, um, honestly, from the moment that Kadeem wrote me a couple of, uh, Kadeem, three years now, <laughs> you know, I said, Evangeline, how can I help uh, BMI? He's been God, he's been awesome. And so uh, moving on, uh, we're going to have Kadeem uh, help us to honor the land that we are in. Kadeem. So the chat should be working now as well, just a heads up. Good evening, everybody. Honoring the land and territory, Halton as we know it today, is rich in history and modern traditions of many First Nations and the Métis. From the lands of the Anishinaabe to the Attawandaran to the Haudenosaunee and the Métis, these lands surrounding the Great Lakes are steeped in indigenous history. As we gather today on these treaty lands, we are in solidarity with our indigenous brothers and sisters to honor and respect the four directions, lands, waters, plants, animals, and ancestors that walked before us and all the wonderful elements of creation that exist. We acknowledge and thank the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation for being stewards of this traditional territory. Amazing, Sharon. I was on mute. I should get a shirt that just says that. I don't know how many times we had to say that in the past three years. But... <laughs> Sorry, I was on mute. So right now we would be introducing the Honorable Minister Charmaine Williams. However, as uh, I mentioned earlier on, she's unable to attend today due to sickness. So what do you want to do, Rajin? You want to jump right into Arthur? Or you want to play this play some music? Um, let's jump right into uh, introducing Arthur and perhaps having him give his uh, keynote speech, and afterwards we can play one music. Beautiful. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have the pleasure today of Arthur Imadi all the way from Nigeria. He's the head of vision and youth diaspora. So Arthur is the head of vision and global youth mobilizer in youth and diaspora. He helps organizations and governments unite young people for nation building and national development. His, pass his passion is to lead people, places and institutions better than how he finds it, which is wonderful. He currently serves as a youth advisor for the United Nations at CCUNESCO, which is a Canadian commission of UNESCO. Uh, he is a Black Diplomat Academy Fellow and is also the previous director of youth engagement at COPFI, which is a Canadian Association of Urban Financial Professionals, which is an organization which unites people of African descent in the Canadian economy. He is a champion for the United Nations to sustainable development goals and a promoter of the international decade of people of African descent. Arthur believes that the African diaspora has a role in solving problems for their communities locally and, and the diaspora globally. Mr. Ahmadi, he is certain that, uh, th that, that a committed group of young people can and will bring change to this world. When he's not working, he enjoys traveling. He is a God-fearing servant 
leader dedicated to continuously evolving, growing, and learning. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from the motherland, Mr. Arthur Imari. Uh, Arthur? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear me? No feedback. Yes. yes <laughs> loud and clear, loud and clear, brother. Loud and clear. <laughs> we all mute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sheldon. Thank you so much, Evangeline. It's my pleasure and an honor being here today. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I'm so grateful to have the pleasure of speaking, um, sharing my story and kind of just the importance of community building and youth. Today is, is a great day. Um, we're here together talking about Black mentorship. Uh, I think it's very important just to highlight a couple of things. I'll, I'll make a couple of jokes before I get right in. Um, I, the first thing is, you know, at UNESCO, we talk about the Canadian Commission. You know, I, I heard Sheldon when he was speaking, talking about UNESCO. It's just UNESCO. Um, everyone, if you want to be a youth advisor at UNESCO, let me know. I'll connect you to the right people um, and we can make it happen. So first of all, again, my pleasure being here. I'm really grateful to be here. I think my bio kind of sums everything up pretty much at the end. I really believe in serving leadership, serving the people. Um, that's really what I'm about fundamentally. People are everything. You know, when God created the world, you know, at the end of the day, we were created for this community, you know. And back in the day, they had communal living. I'm going to touch a little bit on that in terms of history and youth today. Um, but I'll just share a bit about myself. You know, I came to Canada when I was seven. My mom did a great job. You know, she 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 took me. I don't know if, she, if I'll call it a dream or a nightmare. Some people call it a dream. But there is this American dream. You leave, you know, that continent. You leave the motherland. And then you find yourself in America. You know, luckily for me, my mom didn't go to America. You know, we can see all the George Floyd situation that happens there. And she didn't go to the UK either. You know, so I was blessed. And this is one thing I stand, you know, even here as I'm currently in Lagos, talking about me being a proud Canadian. I was blessed to be brought to Canada rather than, you know, some other countries. So I came here and I had a lot of energy. You know, sometimes they look at, you know, people of African descent and they have a lot of different, you know, things they want to talk about us. But I just call it energy. And I, I'm sure you can feel it on this call right now. There's something contagious about the energy. It's, it's something that we're born with, all of us, right? So I, I just had a little bit more than most people. And for me, I, I thought it was a blessing, but in school, sometimes I got into a little situation here and there. You know, I grew up in Mississauga by five and 10. So I had, I had very interesting people around me, but luckily for me, I had sports that I channeled my energy to. And this is why anytime I talk about, I talk about the power of the Canadian basketball leagues everything that they've done in the past few years in the Jane and Finch area, you know, in the Scarborough area, taking youths off the streets through sports, very powerful. What, you know, one of our Nigerian brothers as well, you know, the president of, of the Raptors is doing, you know, Masai is doing a great job getting young people off the streets. So luckily for me, I channeled my energy into sports, right? So anybody going, growing up in a very interesting environment, one of the things I'll tell you to try and do is, Channel your energy into sports because it's one of the things that helped me and kept me off the streets when other people were getting into things. So that helped me. I started playing, you know, high level rep soccer. I played for the Mississauga Falcons. And then there came a time where I got selected to play for Team Ontario. And luckily for me, you know, I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse. My mom decided that American dream that she thought about when she brought us to Canada, it was time for me to go back, you know, to Nigeria. So I went back to Nigeria. I didn't go back. She shipped me back. You know, the energy was too much. So she shipped me back to Nigeria. I stayed there for three years. I was in a pub. I was in a private school in the bush. Crazy. I saw beetles, you know, this big. They were massive. They were huge. You know, um, I had to wash my clothes with my hand. You know, just a whole different experience that, than you would have in Canada. And that made me mature really quickly. And, you know, those three years completely changed my life. I came, I came back to Canada. I was an escape. I told them, hey, you know, I, I really want to learn this tech thing. And I think this is another thing I want to pass on to, you know, our generation here in Canada, the importance of technology, importance of getting into the tech space. We have people like Lekon, who's the head of Black Professionals and Tech Network. We're working on something for the youth, which we might share later on. But I think it's very important for us to get into technology as a people. So I told my parents about 10 years ago, hey, I want to come back to Canada. I want to study computer science. I want to get into tech. And that was my escape. So I came back to Canada. Luckily for me, I got connected to, you know, someone when I was serving, again, community. I was at a community center serving, helping young 
people that look just like us, teaching them how to play basketball, coaching them. And I met someone. This is the importance of volunteering. You know, Evangeline has put up an amazing organization with BMI and there are young people on this call. And I want to implore you that anytime you have the opportunity to serve, just like I'm serving at the Canadian Commission for UNESCO, take up that opportunity. And when you serve, don't only just serve to benefit yourself, serve and really give all you can so you can help people and help organizations move forward. So I was serving at the Carmen Kabashian Community Center back then in Mississauga, it was Cawthorn Park Community Center. And I got connected to someone. You know, volunteering allows you to connect with people. This person then connected me to another person named Bob Proctor, a fellow Canadian who unfortunately passed away last year. And I met Bob Proctor, you know, when I was 16. So I found myself in Las Vegas at a convention, a business convention, listening to Bob Proctor. And he completely changed my mind. He connected me to people like Dr. Miles Monroe, you know, who, again, bless his soul, has passed away. People like Jim Rohn, who, bless his soul, passed away. You know, I keep talking about people who have gone away from, you know, this earth and gone to be with the Lord. But I think this is very important for us as youth to understand the wisdom in the adults, the history that comes with their wisdom, what they've lived. And I started listening to these people, Dr. Miles Monroe, John C. Maxwell, you know, Bob Proctor. And they completely changed the way I was thinking. They changed my mindset. I got mentorship. It was indirect mentorship. I didn't need to be with them. But the power of technology allowed for their words that have lived long after they've gone to continue mentoring me. And this, is, this played a huge role in my life, completely changed my life. And that's what led me into entrepreneurship. My role in starting you know, a massive company that basically covered a lot of the guys in Canadian basketball. I, I worked with the Ontario Scholastic Basketball Association. The guys at North Pole who know me, you know, On Point, Drew Banks knows me. So these are the kind of people I started working with because of my mindset, because my mindset through mentorship was transformed. So because of that, I then got into entrepreneurship. And it's the same thing I'm going to employ to everyone here. Once you get into mentorship, once you get into service, once you can get into technology, also try and get into what? Entrepreneurship. It's one of the things that will change our community. You know, we talk about the economic power of the black dollar. It is real. But if we don't continue to use our knowledge, our experience, our service, our mentorship to get into technology, to then ensure that we have an increased capacity in black dollars, we won't be able to fulfill our potential, especially here in Canada. So luckily for me, got into entrepreneurship. That was amazing. And uh, I was fortunate to start traveling quite a bit. Um, I, I got a client in Miami. This client was a trader, financial markets. And this is where I started learning about the financial markets. I'm going to say this clearly, the financial markets is not for everyone blockchain, crypto, forex, you know, it's not for everyone. But if, if it's for you, look into it. I was in high school and I won my stock market competition. So I, I knew I had that gift, you know, but it's not for everyone. I had that gift and I, I loved it. It opened a lot of doors for me. And that's what also led me to, you know, going to serve at CAUFP as a director for youth engagement. I have one of my friends, Fikayo, you know, before him, I was the youngest, you know, director at the Canadian Association of Urban Financial Professionals. Now he's there as well, right? So also the importance of connecting, you know, people to organizations. So I got into, you know, coffee, also then looked at the Canadian Commission for UNESCO because of the work we're doing with youth in diaspora. And then also, I think it was very important for, for what's coming with the Black Diplomats Academy is that even though you get into entrepreneurship, government is important. You know, we were supposed to have a government official here. Um, I, I think maybe yesterday or a couple of days ago, um, Adam Van, you know, and Milton had a, had a conversation with Minister Jean Augustine, you know, and Mr. Jean Augustine was the first African Canadian woman to be elected into Canada's House of Commons and as a member of parliament for GTA. She did, this was for Etobicoke Lakeshore constituency. Again, the power of community and history and for youth, I didn't know about Honorable Jean Augustine until about, I would say, 2019. I was never taught, taught about her in high school. I was never taught about her coming through, you know, the typical education system. And this is why I want to talk about, you know, the power of personal development. As a young person, whoever's listening to me, anyone on this call, I think it's very important that even though you go to school and you learn formally, I think it's also very important to learn informally using what I call YouTube University. You know, explore, self-discover, look into things that have been happening. So just to, as I'm rounding up, um, I think, it, it, again, from what I've been saying, very, very important to also look into the government. 
right? Um, government is very important. Even though you have an, you're an entrepreneur and entrepreneurship is very powerful, if you don't also align with the government and if you don't get involved in your community politically, right? Ultimately, if, you, if you're building a community, if you're getting influence in your community, if you're connecting people in your community, financially, you're, you're increasing in your community. I think one of the things that we should also look into is how do we get young people, how do we get our community also represented in the government? I love what the, the chair of the Black Caucus is doing, you know, Greg Fergus. These are the kind of people that we should be trying to get more of in our community. You know, more people involved, Minister Hussein, the former Minister of Immigration, right? We need more representation. So uh, long story short, from service, we get into community, community to technology, technology to entrepreneurship, and from entrepreneurship to government. Very, very important pathway um, to huge community building and influence in, in, in our community. So again, um, I think there have been a, one or two challenges uh, you know, in, in my journey. Um, it's not always been amazing. I think, you know, me sharing my story, you guys might be listening, where you folks might be listening and saying, wow, this is amazing. You know, Arthur, you said all these amazing things, but, you know, is it really, you know, how it is? Is all that glitter, is it gold? And the truth is, it's not. Everything that glitters is not gold. You know, leadership is sacrifice. Leadership is service. Sometimes leadership is painful. Sometimes building communities is tough. Everybody has their interests. Everybody has what they want to do. Everybody has their own purpose. And sometimes it can be really hard to gather people together, especially coming from our history, from what we've gone through, the oppression. It's played a psychological role in us and we need to be aware of it. So no, not everything is hard. Sometimes, you know, I've had experiences where I'm building youth in diaspora, where we're connecting and uniting young people of African descent all over the diaspora, in Canada, in the UK, in North America. And on that journey, you experience different things, even within your own people that look like you. And this is one of the things that we need to be aware of in order for us to break. Because I've had times where I want to include people from the Caribbean. I want to include people from not just West Africa, but East Africa in Southern Africa, Central Africa, or Black Americans. And it's tough. Some people don't, don't think of things. How do you ensure that you incorporate everyone's beliefs as people, as Af of, people of African descent? So yes, community building is, is very important. But I think something that's even more important is, is the emotional intelligence, the relational management, how you relate with people, how you understand their differences, how you understand you know, where they're coming from and, and how to bring them into what you're doing. Is it just me? No, either Sorry. he fell asleep or he had a bad signal. Oh, there yeah, he is. Am, I, am I good? You're good now. Sure, yeah. sure. Sir, where, where, where did I, where do you guys lose me at? Sorry. Just a second ago, so you're good. Go ahead. Okay, uh, awesome. So I said, ultimately, I think it's really important, you know, for us to, when we're building community, um, yes, we, we have to take into account the relational management. Yes, we have to take into account, you know, people's uh, interest. We have to be empathetic. Yes, things are going to be tough. But I think ultimately, if we lead with humility, and I think this is the cornerstone of what I'm sharing today. If we can leave, if we can lead truly with a servant's heart, truly servant leadership, truly servant, humi truly humility, leading with love, empathizing with the other side, trying to understand before you're understood, trying to see the other perspective. I believe we will be able to gather and mobilize our community to get into technology, to get into entrepreneurship, to get into government so that our voices can be heard. If we do not lead with humility, if we lead with selfishness, 
if we lead with entitlement, if we lead with it's only my way or the highway, we will never, and I, I repeat this, I, I say this with conviction because I've seen it not just in Canada, I've seen it in America, I've seen it in Europe, I've seen it here on the continent in Nigeria. If we do not lead with love, humility, and we lead with an, a, a sense of entitlement and selfishness, our community will never be able to mobilize, whether it's the resources, human resources, financial resources, spiritual resources, emotional resources that we need to build our community to fulfill its potential. And on the last day of February is Black History Month. We need to understand that the labors of our heroes that have come before us, just like the video showed us, like Minister Jean Augustine, like Madame C.J. Walker, like Wes Hall, like Isaac Oluwalafi, the work that they've put in, it can't go to vain. It cannot go to vain. Our ancestors that were killed, that were brought as slaves, if we continue to put our personal ambition over the collective progress of the community, their labor will go to vain. And we cannot afford to have that. So as I wrap it up, again, I wanna say, in community building, in bringing everyone together, it is not about me, it is about we. We talk about the spirit of Ubuntu, and how powerful we are as a people. The good book says, study the ants. They have no leader, but they are extremely, extremely powerful. Lead with humility, lead with service. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Oh my God, oh my God. I mean, if you're with me here, please put in some of those nuggets that Alta just left us with in the chat box, right? You know, we have to live, you know, with humidity. It is not about I, it is we, you know. Um, please put some of those uh, nuggets that he just shared with us. Uh, in the chat box, he touched all angles. He touched about how we all can contribute to building the community that we are all striving for. He talked about how we can let um, the, the, the work of all of those people that we watched in the video and those current, uh, those still living, uh, go to waste, right? Uh, he talked about the importance of vol volunteering you know, service, love them, you know, um, being a servant. Um, he also touched around um, power of mentorship, which is which is basically, you know, what we are doing through these sessions. Because oftentimes we think about mentorship only when we talk to somebody. No, from outer stories, you could tell he was somewhere, he listened, he had an open mindset, it impacted him. And voila, he's been having success. You know, one of the things that I also love that you touched on the challenges as well, right? That you've encountered because oftentimes uh, in, on LinkedIn, it's all about the good news, the good news, the good news. And sometimes I go, am I the only one having challenges? <laughs> <laughs> so I am so happy that you talked about it. And yet I see Fede saying, Relational management, yes, uh, the collective, you know, wonderful presentation. Uh, the chat is really hot for you at all. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I know you are logging in from Nigeria. I'm hoping that you can still stay on. I can't pretend that I, you know, that the election didn't just happen and it's still like going on. So maybe take up one minute to tell us what's going on in motherland for crying out. <laughs> Uh, before yes, you, yes, yes. before I'm, you jump I'm in, sure Arthur, I just want to I just want to give you your flowers as well before we move on to what's going on in Nigeria right now. <laughs> what I love is how you built in everything here, right? So we're building social integration and bonding. 
And the way that you wove that in is very important. All the chats are saying exactly what's important, leading with humility. We all know, and a lot of people aren't involved in the community or aren't involved in the government or aren't involved in political efforts because they don't see humility out there. They mm. see people popping their collars and trying to get the shine on and just trying to get that recognition. And that does nothing for anybody for the long term. And I think that's what makes a leader a leader. It's mm -hmm. not standing up at the pulpit, looking down at other people. It's standing down with the other people, looking up at what they can do together. And I love that you said a servant, and I love that you said with love, because I know Evangeline, that's 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 your 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 catchphrase, lead with love. Mm -hmm. I was listening to a radio show the other morning, and I think it was Nas who was being interviewed. He says that's one of the biggest things that he has done in his music is he brought love mm -hmm. into it. And if you think about it, the one thing that that actually does bond and unite us is love there's nothing else that has that linear path that brings us all together that builds social integration and bonding as love as love does so very important there um on this uh gene i sorry honorable uh gene augustine i i had the uh pleasure of seeing her again last night when she had her movie steadfast um, Adam Vancouver didn't was there last week. CCH, we had a filming of that. Sorry, a screening of that film as well. Extremely powerful. If anybody on the line gets a chance to watch this story, it'll blow your mind. Coming from Grenada, back when she was a young woman, it, on a scheme just to help, um, um, uh, you know, uh, let's just say rich people in Oakville at the time and what she turned her life into. And one thing that resonated in the conversation last night was she always had a positive outlook. She always had a smile on her face mm. and she always thought about doing the right thing. And that's what she's making such an impact today. So Arthur, thank you so much for sharing your story, sharing your journey, sharing about five and 10, because I know about grannies and Caribbean barbers and Trinbago. I know five and 10 quite well. And uh, rising up from that area is a challenge at times, but sometimes coal makes a diamond, and I see that in you. So thank you again for your uh, your, your kind words. Now, uh, what's Sorry. going on in Nigeria? <laughs> <my friend? laughs> so well said, Sheldon. Well said. You know, you touched all the good points. Yes, and, and you know what I thought as you addressing that question, what's going on in motherland Nigeria? Also, remember, you know, to throw in one question for the youth. So let's see who can win that first gift card. Go ahead. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Evangeline and Sheldon, for, for the honor. Um, I remember, I believe it was it was the Black History Month, again, maybe a few years ago, where, where I met with Sheldon. Um, and again, someone who's been in the community, bringing people together, mobilizing young people. And... I'm, I'm grateful again for the opportunity to, to speak here. Um, one of the things I, I sometimes see as young people is sometimes, not all of us, but some, some of us don't give honor to, to where honors do. You know, I wouldn't be on this call speaking to everyone here if not for Sheldon. And I'm taking this time to, to appreciate him because, you know, sometimes you need people uh, behind the scenes to open the door for you. Sometimes it's not your gift alone that will open the door for you. Sometimes there needs to be someone that opens the door for me. So thank you again, Sheldon, you know, for, for giving the opportunity and connecting me to Evangeline. I really appreciate it. Um, in terms of what's going on in Nigeria, I think before I touch on, on what's going on in Nigeria, I really want to touch on, on the comment about love um, and, and kind of what you, you mentioned, Evangeline, because as leaders, and one of the things I think to speak to everyone on this call is we're all leaders, mm. you know, you don't have to be um, the founder of an organization to be a leader. You don't have to be the CEO to be a leader. You don't have to be the vice president to be a leader. The first most important form of leadership, and this ties so powerfully into community building, is your self-leadership. How do you lead yourself? What is your mental picture of you? Do you see yourself as a king or a queen of African descent? Or are you just passing through life? You first have to see yourself as a leader. That image of yourself is what a lot of us have lost. We think sometimes, oh, we're just immigrants in a country. No, Canada needs us. Hmm. And I have no problem saying to whoever it is in government, whether they are in the federal government, whether they're in the provincial government, whether it's the mayor, 
this country will not develop without people of African descent. There is a reason why the immigration law is open. It's not closed. <laughs> they need us as much as we think we need them. They also need us. So we have to look at ourselves as leaders. You as an individual, you are God's highest form of creation. You are not a tree. I'm sorry to say it. you're not a car. You are not a rock. You know, you defeated about 7 billion sperm cells to be here on earth. <laughs> you are powerful. You are important. Um, so love yourself. Hmm. Love yourself. Love yourself. Um, and love is, is patient. You know, if you're not where you are right now, it's okay. You know, I was lucky. I had the, the grace of time. You know, God blessed me early on that I was connected to people very early. But there are people who are just starting their journey at 30, 40, 50. You know, uh, I think the owner of KFC started, I think, when they were in their 60s. So, so be patient. If you, you're not Arthur, you weren't speaking to, to, you know, crowds of people, you know, at Humber, you know, four years ago. It's okay. It's, it's patience. Not everyone is on the same race. You do not have to, you know, be done university at 22. You don't have to be done, uh, uh, you know, get, got married at 25. You don't have to be a millionaire by 40. No, no, it's okay. Everyone has their path in life. So love yourself first. Be patient. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Things can still change. Things can still change. So in terms of the challenges, um, you know, love, love also is not envious. The same way we're talking about the, the, the current situation in the motherland. There's an election going on in Nigeria. And there's a young man, you know, a young candidate who is taking the election by storm. He's shocking people. He's shocking the current system. He's shocking the international observers. Everyone is shocked. In fact, he defeated the sitting government in their own state. Imagine, you know, the conservatives are strong in Ontario and someone ran for premier in Ontario from the NDP and beat, you know, the, the premier in Ontario. That, that's kind of the situation that's going on. A young person who maybe would be an indigenous person becoming the premier in Ontario. That's kind of what's going on. But again, I'm speaking about love is not envious. There are people right now who are envious of this man. Who is trying Very to envious. Talk. Who is trying to bring change? Who young people are supporting? It's, it's, it's incredible seeing what's going on. And he's not boastful. The same way love is not boastful and love is not proud. He's not proud. Mm. A very humble man, very humble leader. He doesn't dishonor people. The same way love is not dishonoring. He mm. does not dishonor people. He has his campaign, a very clean campaign. You won't hear him talking down on people. Mm. A, very, a very loving campaign from a politician that are known to speak, you know, negative from two sides of their mouth. Very loving, humble campaign. He's not self-seeking. He's been a person that said, if, you know, you can find any criminality against me, you know, do what you want and I'll leave, you know? So he doesn't get angered easily. They've spoken things about him, mm -hmm. but yeah, this is, a, this is the situation. This is the situation that we have in the motherland. He, you know, he's not evil. Mm. He speaks the truth. He trusts people, you yeah. know, and he's trying to preserve the nation, the young people. So here uh, we're, we're excited. We're is excited. We're excited there? fully. Yeah. Pardon? I was just asking if there's, sorry to cut you, but it, it, I was just asking if there's a lot of violence because a lot of times we just see um, what we see on, on, on media, right? Uh, so it's hard yes. to tell what's actually happened on the ground. Is there a lot of violence that, that are there? That's no, now? so on the, on the election day, there were some scuttles of violence here and there, but overall, there's no violence. Things are going on normally. And I think that's one of the narratives, you know, we need to also sometimes change. There are places on the continent that have are, are known for violence you know a lot of violence where war was going on like ethiopia last year but for example in nigeria there are two places that i can always recommend for anyone who's ever looking to come to the motherland there are places like abuja which is the capital territory you know which this young man you know also won and shocked everyone extremely safe 
extremely safe. I'm there. And Lagos as well. There are places in Lagos that are extremely safe. If you come yeah. to the island, Victoria Island, the Koi, very yeah. safe. So, yeah. Yes. I, I no, t- There were some scuttles of violence on the election day, but overall. Overall, been, overall, things yes, seem very, very good. Peaceful. Yeah. Thank you so, so much yes, Bob, for my that. Question. Yeah, it's my question. Yeah, it's my question. Because I, I know... I know we have some young people on the call. Okay. Um, and I, I'm very sure because there's always one person. And what what, what I, age is young? Does do I qualify or oh, oh. <laughs> yes, 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 young? Yes. I love that you said that. <laughs> I was young at heart. <laughs> no, that's me. young at heart. Young, young at heart. Well, the, the United Nations, you know, where I serve as and the I Canadian see Commission Andrew saying I'm young as well. <laughs> <laughs> they, they tell us that the youth are anywhere from 15 to 24. But since I'm in Nigeria right now, since I'm in Nigeria right now, we can go with the African Union, oh, which says we should be going is, with the Canada one. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which says, I, I'm trying to give some grace since it's the Black History Month, you know, okay. since it's 15 to 34. So I guess, you know, if you're under 34, you know, <laughs> if you're under 34 and you would like to win $25, what do you got? Um, what do you got, Arthur? What's the question? Let's see if you can answer this question. So just put it down in the chat. Um, and, and it has to do with Canada, obviously. So, if anyone can tell me where the first settlers from the US came to and settled um, in the slave trade. Okay. What city it is? Kadim, can you help me? I'm typed that in. Twenty-five dollars. The question, please. Twenty-five dollars. The Did first you... place. Do we have some Jeopardy US. music, Kadim? Do we have some Jeopardy music for this to go along with the? Uh... Okay, <laughs> I got the first person that says Niagara. Arthur, Niagara. Nope, it's not Niagara. Nope. Go ahead, guys. I Don't wish I could play. Huh? <laughs> I wish I could play. I know the answer. <laughs> I can see you smiling. <laughs> and when this. There you go. Okay. Uh, no, Andrew. Andrew. Mm mm. Andrew. <laughs> not uh, no, no. Come on, guys. Where are the young people here tonight? This is an opportunity to win. I might have to open um, it up. If, if, uh, if you know what, know what we're going to do? Okay, let's keep it coming. Let's yeah, keep our, our, our eyes on that chat box. Who will be the first person that will get the answer? And I'll tell you, can so, let so us I'm asking. Know. I'm asking for a city. I see the province. People, people are getting the yeah. province, but I'm asking for a city. City, guys, come on. We need to get down to do it. Stop looking at the internet. I can see you. I can see you Googling. <laughs> I can see you Googling. Okay, we got to really move on. Uh, why that's going on? Why you are putting your questions in there? Um, we're going to play a little bit of music um, from CCH uh, Library, the Still Pan. Yes. Um, Atos, thank you so much for that powerful speech. Please, please, please stay on. Don't go anywhere. And um, go ahead, uh, Shadow. I'm, I'm here with you. I'm here with you. Leading with love. All okay. right. Thank you. So we're going to be playing a little bit of Steel Pan from the Canadian Caribbean Association of Halton Steel Pan Band. This is part of a series that we put together during COVID. Uh, we got a grant from the Oakville Community Foundation and uh, put together a really great um, uh, array of different music. This is our Steel Pan Band. We can go to our YouTube station. Um, a little note, um, spoiler alert, you're going to hear some commentary regarding COVID because, again, this was during the COVID time. But if you guys feel a little festive, Carnival just finished in uh, Trinidad, get up, shake your legs, shake your waist, and dance a little bit. And without further ado, here we go. The Canadian Caribbean Association of Steel Pan Band. Off the Fizzle Project by Teddy St. John, X Games. We don't have an audio. Hmm. 
Hmm. Shadon, we're not hearing now. I think you might have to reshare with the sound. Yeah, I think he can hear it, so he doesn't notice that we can. Yeah, Sheldon, can you hear me? We don't ha have the volume to the um, still pan. You don't hear the volume? Nope. I see you nodding your head, so we we can we can, we can tell that you you were. <laughs> it, worked. Mm -hmm. yeah, it worked like five minutes ago. Why is it not working now? No, we tried it out. Yeah, we tested it. Uh, let's try something. Let's just redo it. Sorry, guys. I'm here jamming by myself, not knowing you guys. Are here. <laughs> Can you hear that? Yeah. Better. Uh, Sheldon, when you oh, share, make sure to it. click the bottom left where it says share sound as well. When you, when you click share, you'll see it as you're selecting the screen on the bottom left, there should be a checkbox. song all right well we're gonna keep the vibes rolling with farmer nappy's hook in me if you guys know this song please sing along
having a great time. We're going to slow it down. All right, all right, all right. Live. I see some people saying they feel like they want to fit. The vibes <laughs> sound like a Nigerian artist. People dancing in their chairs. All right. So feel free to check out our YouTube channel, Canadian Caribbean Association of Halton, for a lot of great entertainment. What do we have next here, Evangeline? Thank you so much, uh, Sheldon. That was really good. You could, I, I'm sure you saw me rocking and shaking and moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, next, really. Oh, my God. Thank you, our incredible leaders, for your patience. Uh, you know, uh, everyone, we have amazing speakers here tonight. You know, um, before I start introducing them, let me just let you know, nobody has won yet. You know, so I'm asking Arthur to please come up with another question, maybe based on his speech, so that we can have a winner. You know, we do want to give away those uh, $25 gift cards. Um, okay, Brian McNaham. Did I say it right? Okay, I hope so. <laughs> I was just practicing here and practicing. Uh, Brian is the president of Policy Movers Inc., and he has over 20 years of setting up group home and auto insurance programs with Hub International, Aviva Traders, and as an owner of Inroads Insurance, which he recently sold to AIM Insurance. Um, he is also an entrepreneur. He has proficiency in identifying group and affinity opportunities, relationship management, I to just mentioned that, and uh, spearheading effective operational sales and market penetration strategies. I need you, Brian. I need you. <laughs> yeah, I need you. <laughs> when he is not in dance contest, you dance? Woo! <laughs> He's raising support for animals. He enjoys coaching rep basketball in Milton. Say hello. And yeah, go ahead, uh, Shaden. Mr. Brian McClenahan. All right. So next we have Ngozi Ilabochi. HR manager at the Shaw Center. Ngazi loves all things HR and has been fortunate to grow her professional network access across several countries. She considers herself an extrovert who enjoys making social connections and learning from people, although I didn't see her dancing very much. She is somewhat <laughs> of a wanderlust gene and cherishes every opportunity to see the diversity in the world we live in. She enjoys volunteering her time and causes that interest. Sorry, she she allows she enjoys volunteering her time for causes that interest her and is not one to shy away from knowledge as she is vested in continuous personal and professional development. Time spent with her husband and kids is the best part of her day. Cooking is therapeutic for her. And, she, and when she finds time, presenting meals is, is an art she enjoys. I'm looking forward to that next time, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, Ingozi. Where, where do you live? <laughs> I live in the capital city. So right beside Justin Trudeau and all the other politicians that make it happen. Hey. Good evening, everyone from Ottawa. It's good hey, to be that here. That is first. so far away from me. <laughs> okay technology makes everything happen Otto has told us that oh well i'm yes. still waiting for when we can pressure bottle and we can receive that del delicacy from motherland yes. but until then um just to say though i haven't seen brian m here um so sheldon do me a favor oh. please call him yeah i just noticed that he's not here with us um i know earlier on he was having uh technology difficulties well, Otto, you kind of have to do something about this technology. Um, Brian Harris is here with us. <laughs> Brian is a Toronto native who was born and raised in Mal. Is it Malton? A small yes, urban. Correct, Malton. Is that again? Yes, correct. Malton. 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 Okay, great. A small urban town on the outskirts of Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Growing up as an all-around athlete with the ability to physically play any sport he wanted. What a great gift. Brian quickly gravitated to soccer and basketball with aspirations and dreams to go pro. With a lack of support and knowledge needed to achieve such goals, Brian turned to education and mentorship for those that came after him. Thank you. Thank you for that. My son is benefiting from people like you. All Harris Brand and Harris Brand Foundation programs and initiatives are designed to engage, to enrich, to encourage, to empower the mind, body, and spirit. 
welcome Ryan Harris. Go ahead. Uh, Thanks for having me. Thanks for showing up. Uh, last but not least, Brenda Etchenpong. Did I say it right? Etchenpong? Beautiful. The one who was saying that it felt like a fit. Brenda. That actually uh, wasn't bad. The pronunciation was good. <laughs> okay. Was I, I, I've done worse, likely, so. Um, a champong. A champong. A champong. Yes, that was that. Yeah, that's the way to say um, it. A champong? Okay, I got it now. Thank um, you. Research assistant and student at Humber College, Brenda is a dedicated and ambitious research assistant and student currently enrolled in the digital business management program at Humber College with hopes of pursuing a career in the tech industry. You hear that? Connections there. Technology, Arthur. Uh, her interest in tech stems from her curiosity about the ways technology can be used to solve complex problems and improve the lives of others. As a member of various organizations promoting diversity and inclusion, Brenda has demonstrated her commitment to equity and social justice. Her ultimate goal is to create positive change by promoting diversity in inclusivity in the tech industry. Ladies and gentlemen, Brenda Etchampong. <laughs> and we have to add BMI volunteer. Yes. And BMI volunteer. Yes, the one that made that wonderful video. Um, I'm going to be stealing her from you, Evangeline. <laughs> no, 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 no. Trans full transparency. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, oh my God, I need, perhaps I'm going to chain you around, man. There's so many people <laughs> in their hands trying to take you away. Uh, so moving on, we're going into the panel discussion. Um, so once again, uh, please, 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 I'm encouraging everyone to join the conversation and you can do so by using the Q&A and putting in your question. You can ask questions of any one of our uh, speakers here, or you can put it in there and anyone here can um, certainly address the question. So I'm going to start with you, Brian. And again, everyone here, all the panelists, please, please, please feel free to chip in in any one of these questions after the, um, the, uh, the owner, basically, um, you know, attempted for at least. Uh, Brian, what creative ways do you think we can use to strengthen community relationships while respecting our differences and cultures? And um, speaking of which, you know, I will also want you to touch on how you think, right, uh, we can ensure that we continue to welcome newcomers in Canada, immigrants, also talked about us being needed in Canada. So what do you think we need to do to ensure that we integrate in the community? Well, first yeah. and foremost, uh, thank you. Could everybody hear me? Good. Good. Uh, I, I appreciate it. I really do appreciate you guys uh, giving me the opportunity to be a part of this, this panel uh, of young professionals. Um, done a little background on everybody and everybody's doing phenomenal things. And this is exactly what we need as a community to continue to uh, not just help each other grow, but to help the community and, and the youth and, and everybody within the community grow. So learning more about what each other does and, and um, you know, how we could potentially work together um, as, as Arthur has alluded to, uh, in his speech, great speech, by the way. Um, I think that that could definitely, definitely help us. Um, but, but as mentioned, my name is Brian Harris, and uh, I was I was born here in Canada, and um, gravitated to sports. And I felt like through sports, I was able to make a lot of connections, right? Uh, not just within my school, with friends in other networks, in other communities, um, older, younger, it didn't really matter. Uh, I was able to you know, build out who I am today through sport. Everybody has their journey, everybody has their path. Uh, but for me, uh, it was sports, right? Uh, and then later on, obviously I wasn't able to continue down that road um, because as, as we get older, we weren't, we weren't able to you know, go the full distance within the sports realm, but I just found other ways for me to give back, help the community um, the best way I knew how, right? So to, to answer your question, I felt like I, I brought the question back to my team 
Um, and and obviously we'll probably get into this a little bit later, but there's two arms to what we do. We have a for-profit services side to what we do called the Harris brand. Um, and on that side, that's where we provide a lot of services to the youth within sport to help them as they navigate the whole scholarship process, they wanna to get to post-secondary. There's a lot of services that we felt that were lacking in, the, in our city and in our community. Um, and that's no knock on the local clubs and organizations that are housing a lot of these youth, but we felt that we could work in conjunction with, we could work alongside and provide those educational services that these youth uh, needed. Um, and then through that, we started to realize that uh, they not only need the educational support, but they also needed the financial and mentorship support as well. And that's when our charitable organization was birthed birth back in 2014. Um, and we, to this day, we've just been working diligently on raising funds to provide uh, you know, that mentorship, education, and scholarship opportunities for those same youth that we're helping. Um, so that, that's a little bit of the background on me. And again, I, I think we'll, we'll get deeper into that a little bit later. But to, to more specifically answer your question, my team, we broke down into pretty much four different categories that we felt, that we felt could help, right? One was um, cultural exchange programs, right? Just making sure that uh, when youth or, or foreigners do come to our country, we're making sure that it's, we provide programs, organizations like ours, organizations like yours, could provide the appropriate um, culture exchange, so making sure that they feel at home here while here, right? Um, community service projects, making sure that they are able to participate in the projects that are extremely important within the community as well, right? Um, community festivals, I know you guys do a phenomenal, I see you guys, the CCAH, you guys do phenomenal work in the community by pro providing um, these all-inclusive events, um, uh, for the youth and, and, and for foreigners and, and people that, are, that have been living here. That's what creates community. That's what allows for people to feel um, a part of something, right? And that they could assist and help to, for the betterment of the entire community. Um, and then just dialogue and discussion, figuring out exactly what that need is um, for these foreigners to come in and, and, and say, okay, well, this is what you need in order for you to be successful. This is how we as a community organization could assist you um, in your journey for success, right? Um, and it, it, you know, as long as we are listening and we're willing to implement um, our strategies and, and, and learn and grow, there's no perfect organization out there, but we're willing to listen, learn and grow collectively then I think there will be uh, you know, a better pathway for success for all, right? Uh, from an inclusive standpoint, right? Hope that makes sense. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, community events are very essential in you know, not just having fun. <laughs> I love this event, so I love to have fun, but it also helps us to educate the community about who we are. Uh, as individuals, as communities, and, and to your point, you know, without us having this event, it becomes very difficult for us to relate, um, even, you know, uh, from where we are from, uh, for those of us, well, not me, people like Arthur that came here when they were young, or those that were born here. So yes, you're so right. Um, community events and so many other things that you say uh, really matters in community building. Um, I'm going to hand over to you, Sheldon. All right, great, uh, great dialogue there. And I think that if you summarize that into four words, it's building social integration and bonding. I think it kind of aligns exactly with what we're doing here today. So good answer there, Mr. Harris. Brenda, we're over to you now. Uh, Brenda, as a Black student living and studying in Canada, I believe you're second generation Canadian, is that correct? Yeah. yeah? All right. Uh, based on your experiences, what do you think needs to be done to ensure every member of our community feels seen and belonging? Um, 
I believe a great deal of effort needs to be made to increase diversity and representation. So ensuring that diverse voices and perspectives are being represented in all aspects of community. So in leadership, decision-making roles um, and curriculum development. Um, I also believe that offering resources and support to help individuals from marginalized communities, whether that be academically or professionally. So this can include scholarships, um, access to mental, mental health services, which is important. And of course, mentoring programs like BMI and CCAH. Um, that's why it's important to highlight these programs that do exist. Um, and ultimately, it just requires an ongoing commitment to listening um, having, having open dialogue, such as the one we're having today, learning and taking actions to address systematic issues in order to foster a culture of respect and inclusivity um, and essentially celebrating where diversity is happening. Um, so this can be done through creating safe spaces um, and essentially like Arthur mentioned, working together to create the environment we wanna see. Um, one African proverb that I absolutely live by, um, and we were discussing it earlier, um, it's if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together, go together, sorry, um, which kind of encompasses the whole idea of what we were talking about, you know, community um, and giving back. I love that, actually. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. It's almost what they should use over the HOV lanes on the highway, right? <laughs> but no, very, very, very well spoken, very well said. And I think that's, that's um, you know, a lot of times we have these type of sessions and panel discussions and people say things kind of high level of what you think things should be and how, you know, um, you know, the holistic solution without giving direct examples and pointing out resources like BMI and CCH as areas to help and not just scholarships but mental health which is extremely important nowadays especially with what COVID did to our community more than most other communities out there so thank you very much for that Brenda. Um, Evangeline back to you. Yeah it's, um, yeah, it's funny a thing um, Brenda I said what the, the proverb you just said now I said it I don't know how many times yesterday um, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I uh, spoke at an event, uh, I spoke to little kids, my goodness, uh, over 300 people, uh, young kids yesterday, and I had to bring together a team to make that happen. And I kept saying the same thing that you said, right? Um, because I pull uh, people from different the cultural persons, somebody with the folktale and all of that, the event yesterday was successful. And so you are so right. If we need to build community, it definitely has to be. Um, we all have to pull all of us together. Um, at all, bottom line, uh, the, the work we are all doing, every one of us here, the work that we are doing, you know, is to ensure that future generation, right, that they have um, a better world to live in. Hopefully they have better experiences than us. Right. So I have um, two questions for you. Uh, one, I know you work extensively with youths. You, you know, your speech, you touched on that. Um, and based, so based on your interactions with them. So now I'm expecting you to be a youth's voice advocate. <laughs> what should leaders, you know, what should all of us, you know, continue doing to encourage youth participation in the community? And then the second one is, what actions do you believe, you know, consciously or unconsciously that we, you know, we, we partake in that limit youths from participating? Thank you so much for, for the question. I really appreciate it. And uh, j just before I answer, um, I do want to say that we, we have a winner, you know, we have a winner for my question. My question was the three people um, that I mentioned who, who changed my life. And one was Dr. Miles Monroe, God bless his soul, from the Bahamas, my Caribbean dad. You know, that's what I call him, my Caribbean dad. And then we have um, Jim Rohn, who was an entrepreneur, an American entrepreneur. That's also my American dad. Hmm. And finally, but not the least, Bob Proctor, 
um, my Canadian dad. So as you can see, I have a Canadian, American, and a Caribbean dad. I'm close to CCAH. It's just it's CCA. The, the H is almost there. But um, we have an answer, uh, a winner. Kadeem is the winner. And Kadeem will decide who he is going to gift the card to. I think there's someone else in the comment, but I think Kadeem will decide. But to answer your question, the first one, uh, I think the first question had to do with having more youth participation in the community from what i understand that was the first question what what do we need or what do you the maybe the older generation need to to get more youth involved is that's kind of what i'm hearing yes basically what do we need to continue doing to make sure that our youths participate in community building okay awesome i think the first thing is is going back to, to what Brenda kind of said um, and what Sheldon, you know, touched upon, which is if you want to go, you know, fast, you go by yourself. But if you want to go far, you go with a group of people and a team. Mm, very important. Uh, Brian started, you know, his conversation with his team. Um, there is no... I in team. Some people say there's a, there's a I in win, but sometimes you can win by yourself and lose <laughs> still. So you, you have a group of people and, and this, this team is important. Sometimes it's not just a team at work. Sometimes it's not just a team at school. Sometimes it's not just a team at life, but sometimes it's a team in the community. And I, I think the first answer for people like myself, I, I don't want to speak for all the youth um, in Canada, but uh, I would say collaboration. You know, I think one of the things that sometimes, you know, kind of moves young people away from getting involved is when there's a fragmented community. When people are doing so many different things, when they could be doing it together. Um, I know that frustrates me, and sometimes I, I don't want to volunteer in an organization because I'm seeing, well, this person is doing this, that person is doing this, this person is doing this. It's all kind of the same. Why didn't you all just come together? And then when I volunteer, I know we're going to go a lot further, you know. So so that's one thing I think that that, that kind of hinders young people from getting involved is the lack of collaboration in our community. Um, I think it's a barrier for young people to get involved. Um, the second thing I think is, is, is the language, you know, coming from an African background, uh, uh, I would say, especially in Nigeria, we're more harsh, you know, than the Caribbean. Um, sometimes in the Jamaican household, sometimes, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it can get a little bit spicy, but I know in the Nigerian household, it gets really spicy. So, um, I think the, the language um, and I don't want to get too much into mental health and how we were brought up because the older generation also went through this. So uh, we, we can't just as young people put the blame on, on all of you, but it's the same thing you experienced when you were growing up with your parents. Um, sometimes how they spoke to you, um, how they handled you physically, verbally, emotionally. Um, the language to the younger generation in terms of, you know, back to what I said on humility, if someone feels that they're being spoken down at, and even though they're younger, are, are not put on the same level, um, they, they really don't want to be in that environment. You know, in Canada, we talk about creating a safe space for people. Um, and... If someone, a young person doesn't feel, even though sometimes we can be, you know, obnoxious, we can be over the bar, we can be overreaching, we can be loud, we can be, you know, uh, what's the word I want to use? Uh, let's say um, we can be diverse in our thinking and our expression, right? Um, if we don't feel that the environment is safe enough, we won't want to be there. So... Uh, that's another thing I would say uh, um, might hinder young people 
from you know getting involved in community building and then i think the last one is it's it's unfortunate but it's the truth um and it's it's the benefit even though you know someone like myself with what we're doing in youth and diaspora especially in, you know on the continent you know we're here helping children underprivileged children get back into school, hire teachers to reduce school sizes in Canada. We're helping with feeding programs, you know, uniting young people. Um, I, I'm doing it from the bottom of my heart. But one thing that I've learned over, you know, I would say the past five years leading youth in diaspora um, is that human beings all have needs. Um, and Maslow's hierarchy talks about the basic needs you know we talk about food clothing shelter um we talk about the protection right talk about love there's a whole hierarchy um mm -hmm. and one thing that that i think you know sometimes you know might hinder people from 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 getting involved young people is that that love and appreciation that uh, sense of belonging that that um recognition ultimately that hey um if i'm doing this someone is going to see me and i'm going to get something from it there is whether it's a, a, a moral recognition or a financial investment or connected to someone there's human beings ultimately have needs and if they don't see value um in the organization that they want to serve or get involved with in the community you know they they might not really feel that need to even though for me I, I i think it's more important to look at the community as a whole and try to you know try to just serve our community um and put the community first before myself i know human beings innately um have their needs um rightfully so and uh you know we'll, we'll kind of want that sorted out in the long term so so those are the three things and then i think to your second question you know you spoke about what actions do i believe limit the participation of the youth i think that was your second question yes so I, one okay. was how can we encourage them and what the other one is um what, what do we think we are doing um knowingly or knowingly that limits participation and in a way i think you also touched on it you yeah. know, like answering the first one, unless you have other thoughts that you wanted to ask, add. I think I think the important part I'll say is, is is more even for the encouragement, you know, um is the mentorship, you know. For the question, second the question I asked, I, I spoke about the three people that changed my life. Um whether knowingly or unknowingly, they're they're all dead. Only one of them I had the honor of meeting, and that was Bob. Um, but I think mentorship is so is so powerful. Um, with what Mr. Harris is doing with the Harris brand, um, I remember when I was in high school, um, playing soccer at Bishop Reading, and at John Vanney, you know, I started I started seeing him at our games uh, in Milton, uh, helping with some of the the folks playing soccer. Um, even basketball, you know, there are people like him in, in the community. Um, you had people like Coach Miles at Milton Magic back then. And just having that mentorship, having sometimes that mother or father figure outside of your family um, that speaks to you mm. on your level. Brian never, ever spoke down to me that I recall. Miles never spoke down to me. Sheldon has never spoken down to me. You know, Evangeline, you've never spoken down to me. So having that sort of, um, I, I would say, appreciation of the young person, regardless of, you know, where they are, but speaking to them in, in a manner that they would appreciate, um, I think would, would encourage them, really, and sharing with them your experience. You know, uh, one thing that, Miles always did was he shared with me some of the things that he went through growing up. Mm. So we're not perfect, right? The same way I shared my 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 things 
the challenges that I've gone through, um, I've learned so much. And sometimes uh, I look at my life, even though, you know, I am where I am now. And I say, if only someone who had started an organization, you know, trying to solve this problem had told me some of these things five years ago, like one, your idea is amazing but it's not going to go anywhere if you don't have a team. Just like what Brian started his conversation with. Just that alone, if someone told me that five years ago, my life would be a completely different place as of today. I have a team in multiple countries now, but if someone said that to me five years ago, it would be different. Mm -hmm. So I think just encouraging, sharing your story, and saying, hey, this is where I was. This is how I solved some of the, the things I went through. Um, sharing those experiences. I think sometimes informal mentorship is so powerful more than you even think that you know, formal direct mentorship is. So that, that would be my, my answer. Thank you so much for saying all of those. And you are so, 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 so on point, uh, especially when you talk about the need for us to um, provide benefits and when you think about benefits people maybe start thinking about money you know benefit can be to your point mentoring you know um if we're creating volunteer opportunities we should find a way to make sure that whoever is stepping up to say i can support here you know they walk away feeling empowered they walk away with something you know so benefit doesn't necessarily have to be money and that sometimes people start thinking about that and thank you for being kind to us to say you know when you said some of the things that you know we parents you know we 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 do is perhaps what our parents uh, did you know um and god bless um, our, all of our parents, shout out to all of them, but living or not, because they did the best they know how, you know, and that's one thing I, you know, I'm learning with parenting, you know, you continue to do the best that you know how, but the bottom line is we need to learn to now be open, you know, um, communicate with our young, uh, younger ones, with our children, be honest, be truthful, you know, so um, I'm going to hand over to Sheldon. Thank you so much for that, Alta. Great words, great summary. Uh, and then we have a great next uh, speaker. So Ngozi, um, Ngozi or Ngozi? Ngozi. 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 It is no secret that we don't have representation in senior management positions. And one of the other boards I sit in, um, one of the females on the board call it PMS, pale, male, and stale. Um, <laughs> the lack of representation in the workplace often sends a message that you are not enough, that you don't belong um, uh, to those who are represented in leadership. Of course, this can trigger a feeling of not belonging in the community. How can we create representation and a sense of belonging in the workplace? Thank you, Sheldon, and thank you, Evangeline, for the opportunity to speak on this very passionate topic <laughs> coming from a HR space. So I'll begin with saying that it's a multi-pronged approach. There's no one size fits all to this, but something you have to keep in mind is belonging. It's akin to inclusion, right? I need to feel that affinity in the place that I am working. How do you begin? For the workspace, a few things you can do, tactical things you can do is the hiring practices. What are some of those approaches that we can take to better represent or, or limit the disproportionality in the representation of our workforce? You can do what we call targeted hiring. For example, focus in those areas that are not represented, minority or equity seeking groups as we sometimes refer to them. An example that we alluded to, we have black professionals in tech, we have women in tech, we have so many equity seeking groups. And now with the power of technology, they're not out of reach anymore. There are societies stemming up, there is BMI, there is CCAH, you can reach them. You can focus your hiring. Some places will call it affirmative action. But what you don't want to do is be perfunctory about it. It's not tokenism. There are some things that these people bring to the floor, 
right? You begin with the representation piece. When we talk about representation, you can look around the room and say there is representation. But is there a sense of belonging? Is there really inclusion? Do they feel welcome being in that space? Or are you checking a box? Now, that's where we have to decide what dichotomy is for leadership positions. Is the culture, the social integration, the orientation, the assimilation into the space, allowing for such people to become uh, expressive, allowing for such people to seek after their own growth. Some organizations, their culture is perceived internally differently from what it is externally. When I talk about organizational culture, I'm always careful to understand and appreciate the fact that how you perceive culture on the outside may be very warming, welcoming, but when you speak to key people that work in that organization, you will find out that they have a different expression. Um, representation goes beyond your mission statements, those things that we see when we land on your organization page. What actions are we taking? When it's passive is when we see stuff like the statements on your website are speaking to, it demonstrates how you welcome diverse groups, you want to be that place where everybody's welcome and they can be their best self. But we want it to be active. For example, do you have employee resource groups within your organization that cater to the needs of those people, minority or equity seeking groups for representation? Are you taking voices are, that are already at the table? Are you speaking in unison to us? We need better representation. Where do we find this? Where do we find representation in our workforce? Where do we go for this? Or are you kind of separating that these objectives, we can achieve it, but it's this person's goal. It has to be a collective effort. If I, for example, oftentimes as I grow in my workspace, I find that being brown skin, right? There is this assumption that I understand everything about black culture. That is not the truth. I'm just one person with my own lived experiences, with my own exposure, speaking to an aspect of black culture. Now, it's easy for an organization to say, we have representation and the broaden lands on my back to foster diversity, equity, inclusion, and all of that good stuff. But I am not the subject matter expert. It's not the task of one person to do this. When you put me in that position, am I being equipped by management? Can I speak freely and advocate, right? When I'm sharing ideas of where we can find representation in our workforce, do you just say, go along and do it? Am I getting support? Am I getting the funding? Am I hearing everybody collectively say, this is what we want? How can we better support you? Or are we just checking the box? I hate to allude to this, but we see it happen quite frequently, right? There is a quote that I like very much by one author named Vernon Myers. It says, excuse me, diversity, right? Is being invited to the party. Inclusion is being asked to dance. Now, when we talk about equity, is being asked to be a part of that party planning committee. So it's not one size fits all, it's multi approach. When you want to see belonging, psychological safety for people within your workspace, that they continue to advance to those leadership rules, you have to begin from the grassroots. A lot of things have to change. It starts with the hiring practices, the people that come into the organization. It also starts with mentorship within the team. It starts with employee resource group, catering to those people. Equity, equality are not the same thing. Equality means Sheldon needs to be able to see six foot. Sheldon is currently four foot, and I'll provide him a stepping stool that is two feet. Ngozi needs to see six feet as well. Ngozi is currently two foot tall. I'll also provide, provide her with two foot or two inch table. That's not right. That is equality. Now with that, that with that, um, resource that you have provided Sheldon, he can achieve the goal of seeing up to six feet. 
but I will still be struggling. Equity would be because Sheldon is taller than Ngozi, right? I can give him one opportunity. I need to give Ngozi five. This is just by way of an example. I need to break down those systemic barriers that prevent Ngozi from advancing. I need to find what support looks like. It has to be individualized. That is how you begin to break down those challenges that we continue to see. People like similar to me. It's just natural. That is your sense of comfort, that affinity. When you come into a space and you look around, there is often the tendency as humans to gravitate towards similar to me. Now, when you're within an organization and that is clearly lacking or the representation does not land. When we say in HR, we say diversity does not land on inclusion. What we are trying to say is when I look around the room, I have a mixed representation. Let me use race, for example. We're talking Black History Month. We have brown skin, we have others with, that are represented, but are they feeling included? Do I come to this place knowing that the barriers to my advancement is being removed? I have equal access and opportunity. And please, when we say equal access, equal access is not, for example, Otto came to Canada when he was much younger. I would not enjoy the same access that Otto has as a, third, as a first generation immigrant coming in my 30s. Do you see what I mean? So actions that my leaders need to take, my mentors, my CEO, CFO, COO need to take will be different for me to advance in my career. They would have to hold me by hand in quote to say, there are some of the things that you need to learn. There are some of the things that you need to do. This is what the culture looks like. This is our expectation for someone in this role. That growth, that support, that mentorship, it comes again to collaboration and community that we've already talked about. You can't do it alone, right? I often say that unless your service or your product or what you're selling is meant for a particular group of people only, then you can get away with ignoring diversity. But if it's not, which is the case for many places, service providers, product owners, whatever offering you have, you cannot in this time disregard representation and you cannot do just representation. You have to do belonging. I have to feel included when I come into the space. That is how we look to grow. We talk about attrition a lot in many organizations. When we go and do a root cause analysis, you find out that everything looks good, but I don't feel good coming here. That psychological safety piece is missing. Sometimes you can't define it. That's the problem. It's very tricky and dicey. There is just, you just say, get yeah, clauses like, there is just something off about the space. Leaders need to do better. Now, how do we foster that representation and belonging? Effective action. No lip service, no tokenism. It cannot be perfunctory. It's not business as usual. It starts from the gatekeepers and your hiring practices up to the CEO level. My Ooh, goodness. Geez, <laughs> oh my God. I because mean, stuff took us to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that a mic drop? That was a mic drop moment in Gazi. Wow. Um, I do have to say, so first and foremost, when he talked about hiring practice, one thing that really hit home was unconscious biases, right? A lot of people aren't even aware of what they're looking at when they're looking at something. I've been around individuals that, especially I work in the insurance space, so there's a lot of prejudice that creeps into racism by one wrong comment or or action. And, you know, a lot of that, I, I have the conversations with coworkers and people that are within the industry, and I bring it to their light, like, okay, so all of a sudden they're from a certain area or from a certain country, and you automatically trigger an assumption based on what you think or what your learned behavior, what you've been told by media or your surroundings, has told you about this individual. Are you aware that you just exhibited this? I didn't even know I did that. Ah, so how are you gonna hire somebody if you're not aware of this? How are you gonna promote somebody if you're not aware of this? How are you gonna even ask a person for lunch if you think that they're not gonna be able to come with you? So that's something I think is the entire process is understanding that and the training that's required to get that out of the way, or at least to be acknowledged that people not, aren't necessarily actively making the decision to say, I'm going to hire Becky instead of Ngozi because I can pronounce the name. 
you know what I mean? But actually looking at the entire process as to how you get to that next stage. And then on a on kind of a humorous tip, every time you kept on saying action, I was thinking of the 1990s reggae song, um, Action, Not a Bag of Mouth, which is basically what you're asking for. Action, not a bag of mouth. And that's what you're asking for. You're asking for action. You're not asking for them to be saying that they're going to do a bunch of things. You're not asking them to put things on a document and saying, here, we've done our study. And then 10 years later, it's still the same box of individuals at the bottom and the same box of individuals at the top. But how do we make that change? Well, we got to make them aware of it first. And then we have to have the, 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 well, we have to have an Igazi moment where you sit there and you at the top of that soapbox and tell them what it is. And then start to break down the structures that are already there and do it with love. Because we can't do it with a whip. This isn't disciplining your children. You can't take the belt out. We have to figure out a different way to get through that message. So I, everything you said is golden, um, fantastically answered, passionate. And um, yeah, I, 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 yeah. If I, if I could add, Sheldon, quickly, or uh, we got to move. But I, I also like the fact that you mentioned um, because we are a people like people of color doesn't necessarily mean we understand all black people that's right? huge yeah. so many we're so diverse right so uh you know um, i i have Car caribbean descent but that doesn't <clears throat> mean i know all of the intricacies and 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 everything to there is to know about all of the caribbean right of i mean course. Come from Trinidad, but I don't understand everything that happens in Jamaica and the rest, or or even Africa, because I'm I'm from here. And again, that's all based off of education. Obviously, we got to educate ourselves. But because you are black, or you 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 have a you, you come from somewhere, it doesn't necessarily mean you also automatically understand everything. That is huge. That's yeah. huge. That's huge. So I just wanted to to touch on that. So I'm glad that you touched on that and. Um, because it's often overlooked, right? The uh, you know owners or or uh, the individuals that are looking to hire, uh, like Sheldon, you touched on. You know, they they just say, okay, you know what? You're a person of color. We're just going to hire you, not fully understanding that you know uh, there's a process, and and you truly got to get to know who that person is, in order for them to to fill that position um, successfully, and not just because of how you look. And then, yeah, when you hire that person, what are you bringing them into? Are you bringing them into an environment that's hostile to them? Are you bringing them into an environment that has signs on the wall saying, please do not heat up smell of food that has strong smells? I remember being in a in lunchroom saying, please do not microwave food that has strong smells. Well, anybody who came from anywhere warm food has very strong smells. Sorry, I'm not heating up hummus for lunch. So you know, so I think those types of things, I think is they're they're very there are a lot of moving parts, but in, there's I like the way that you touched on all those all those elements. And I'd love to be employed at any organization that you're hiring for. Uh you know, say, let me know. I'm down. I think Evangeline, you're gonna say something there. We 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 ready for Brian? Are we ready for Brian? We are ready for Brian, but you know, one of the things that Ngozi said that got me thinking was checking the box, right? Yes. And, and I just needed to touch on that because uh, as we knock our three years as an organization, I'm looking back to see who is still with us, who, you know, those allies that all raised up their hand and said, hey, Black matters, all Black life matters and all of that. Who is still with us today, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so... I'm just going to leave it there, Brian. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Um, so this question is for you. Uh, what ways do you think? Sorry. Yeah. So what ways do you think that the government, am I echoing or is it just me? Yeah, there's feedback. The echo is coming from Brian's mic. So I'm going to, yeah, if you can mute yourself until she's done. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so what ways do you think the government can assist in promoting integration and bonding in our communities? Uh, what initiatives do you think should be implemented to ensure that community members are informed, that, that, you know, that they are engaged in, with new community initiatives? We've talked about what the workforce needs to do now. Talk to us about what government needs to do. 
Well, thank you very much. And uh, first off, uh, just for point of reference, Sheldon was talking about Nadine Sutherland, the song Action um, from 1991. So I just did that for that's that's for the record. I'll drop it in the chat, Brian. Yeah, thank you. Just because <laughs> I've been waiting for that to come up. So uh, but no, in all sincerity, thank you, everybody, for everyone's time and just being able to uh, to attend and, and listen. Um, one of the things I think is pretty, pretty great is uh, when you come to the realization that you don't really know anything or, or you always have the ability to learn more. Watching that slideshow, um, I know I wasn't on the screen, but I actually got to see the slideshow and, and the steel pan band. It was very, very good and entertaining. But I can honestly say that when I was going through the slideshow, uh, and this is just a, an honest, transparent moment, I knew more about African-Americans and their successes than Afro-Canadians or, or anybody um, that was on that slideshow. I knew some. Um, I had the great pleasure of meeting uh, Lincoln Alexander. Uh, he came to my high school uh, when I was growing up. And funny enough, I went to the same high school as, as Brian Harris uh, on this chat, just a few years in front of him. Um, and we'll just say it a, a few. But one of the things that I thought was really neat when I got to meet him was, um, well, actually, I didn't realize this at the time, but there were people in my school, uh, which was very diverse. And that's one of the reasons why he came to the school. And they were impacted probably in a different way than I was because they got to see, you know, Lincoln Alexander and realized that anyone can be Lieutenant Governor of Canada, which I thought was an amazing thing. And I didn't realize how impactful seeing something like seeing someone who maybe resembles you or is from the same neighborhood as you can have such an impact on what you do. Um, Mentioning what Arthur mentioned about Bob Proctor, um, I, I think that's great. Um, and what I was able to see is when I when I came across Bob Proctor as a, as um, uh, as a teacher is what you think you become, and what you focus on you can achieve. And having someone like Lincoln Alexander represent that in a community where that was not present before. I think is paramount to the success of many people that have come and followed in government footsteps based on what they saw by his representation. Um, one of the things I, I, I wanted to just say before I answer the question is um, I've been doing insurance for about 20 years. And one of the great things about insurance is everything you guys see, everything you look around is underwritten by a policy. Someone's making money off of your house, Someone is making money off of your car. Someone is making off money off of your business. There are a lot of entrepreneurs who are solving problems. And one of the things that I think is an amazing uh, for this panel, and what I've been getting as a, as a general narrative is there is an entrepreneur spirit that a lot of young folks have and problems are opportunities, right? Now, circling that into the the uh the question about government and being more um in tune with what's going on with the community i think you could have great initiatives you can have great intent on programs but if you don't know how to distribute what it is that you're trying to speak to what and what off it, audience whether it's a product in business whether it's a program in government you have to have the right rollout you have to have the right ability to communicate to the grassroots level so that the intended audience are the ones that are receiving the information about this, right? And I think um, that's a just best practices. That's, hey, what are, what are, what are, what's happening in other countries where maybe there are similar situations or environments that we can look at and say, okay, well, this is working in this country. So let's, let's put this into place here. And I'm, I'm a big believer in planting seeds uh, in business, in life. Some of the seeds that get planted don't grow, but unless you actually are planting seeds and planting opportunities, nothing will grow. And just the fact that there are programs that are around is encourageable. However, if they're not working properly, I think those are opportunities for the folks that it's intended to, to create a niche and create a business opportunity in terms of 
I'll give you a great example. In home and auto insurance, we, uh, in my profession, we do something called group home and auto, where we go to affinity groups. So a, a perfect example of that is, and I'm a member, the Black Insurance Professionals Association of Canada, which Sheldon is the, the president of. So you're a member of this association. It's about advocacy. But at the same time, you get discounts and you get benefits. So there's an opportunity there. Right. And there's an affinity that Ngozi mentioned. Actually, affinities are very strong. Being part of something has a lot of buying power. And I think that's kind of my message back to this panel is becoming a community has its own buying power. And, and there are opportunities within that. Um, mentoring, and, and this is the last thing I'll just leave because I know we're short on time. I've seen it with my own eyes. In the community that I grew up in, Brian can tell you, there wasn't anybody in our neighborhood that made it to the NCAA in a basketball scholarship. And the reason being is all of our parents, including mine, were first generation Canadians. Never played basketball. Didn't know the first thing about basketball. However, I grew up in Malton. We love basketball. Now, what you're seeing is all these players that are in the NBA right now, they're second generation kids. They're the, kid, the guys that we played against they're now teaching their kids what it is to make it to the NBA. There's a path. It's been seen. You can see it. So it's basketball. It's being the lieutenant governor uh, of Canada. It's, it's being a, a, a business entrepreneur. And for me growing up, I was fortunate that my dad owned a business so I could watch him do what he did. And he always told me, and I always remembered this, that competition is great. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to be on this panel is I want competition. We get the best out of life and our society if everyone is allowed to compete. So competition is great, but me personally, I'm not in a contest, I'm in a test. This is me building my character, me learning things in business, in life. And I, I, I look upon uh, my dad as a mentor, but I also look upon a gentleman that came out of my neighborhood named Wayne Prabhu. If you wanna look up that gentleman, he's a um, Jamaican descent, Canadian born, grew up in Malton, one of the most successful business uh, entrepreneurs in Canadian history. When he was on the rise, top 40 under 40 in the Globe and Mail. Um, and again, even though I'm not of a Jamaican descent, he came out of the same neighborhood that I came from and I could see it. So the, the, the parting way, uh, words I'd have for everybody on the panel is, Everyone is going to be successful. You're already on this panel to begin with. You're already planted a seed. It's amazing that you've taken your time to listen to us. When you get to where you need to get to and you become experts in your field, I'm, I, I have all the confidence in the world that you guys are going to do the exact same thing, which is you're going to show the, the people, the younger folks in your community that it can be done and share a blueprint with them. So this is just an amazing night. I, uh, I really appreciate everybody's time. Lots of nuggets. Um, please, I, I, I honestly don't know how to begin to thank all of you. Brian, you touched on so many key points. You know, I loved when you talked about communication. Communication is key to everything. You know, government needs to learn to communicate, you know, to the grassroots. They really need to bring it down. It's not all about coming up with different initiatives every time there's an announcement, there's this in new initiative. What is this initiative all about? Are you communicating you know, to, to people that need to understand what you are requiring of them? So it's so, so essential that we do that. And then when you said, you know, if we don't plant a seed, nothing, nothing, nothing grows, you know, definitely. Yeah. You know, um, that is so key as well. You know, we need to definitely do something, make sure that government, you need to be doing something. I hope you're listening. But we as community members, we as individuals, you know, a whole lot of people here have talked about mentorship being so key. Um, we all talked about uh, volunteering. We've talked about being humble servants. We talked about love. There's so much that we've talked about this night, you know, so I am really, truly grateful. Um, thank you, Brian uh, M, for, for that uh, well thought out response. Sheldon, do you have anything to add to it? Um, no, I just think this is uh, fantastic. I think, uh, 
you hit the nail on the head, Brian. And I know the area of Malton, and, and and you're right. Back in those days, there wasn't a lot of community programs. There wasn't a lot of uh, outreach programs. There wasn't any of this type of stuff happening. And I think this is what makes change. This is what moves the dial. This is what opens the dialogue. This is what um, is going to make the next generation even stronger than this generation. And more importantly, not more important, but as important, the newcomers to the country having a place to put their seeds, to plant their seeds in, in the soil that's ready to nurture and grow them while they're here. So Brian McClanahan, Brian Harris, Ngozi, Brenda, I, geez, I mean, all-star staff we got here today. Hey, Evangeline, this is like, <laughs> this is, save, we saved the best to last on the last day of uh, Black History Month. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I you know one thing I'm going to say. We I keep looking at the QA to see if there are questions, but you know what? I believe that our panelists here broke down their responses very, very down. And you know, when you understand what people are saying, what's there to ask, right? <laughs> what's there exactly. to ask? You know, but uh, having said that, I encourage you all if you do have any questions, uh, you think about something, feel free to reach out to Sheldon here you know, or me, um, look us up on uh, LinkedIn, Sheldon Williams, Evangeline Chima, you know, and connect with us, ask us questions. Uh, it doesn't matter that this session or Black History Month events. Did you see how I said it? Black mm -hmm. History Month events, because Black history is a continuous thing. It's an everyday thing. We continue to be Black. And so <laughs> things that uh, <laughs> relate us, you know, we can't say, oh, it's over. Uh, does that no we need to continue to speak up we need to continue to show up we need to continue to do our part to make sure that we build the community that we all want and we all deserve so yes Sheldon thank you so much everyone that joined us here um you know look at uh, putting a survey we really will want to hear from you what do you think about the session that you just listened to today you know give us your feedback because the whole objective here is to ensure that we continue to provide you sessions like this that speak to your heart that you learn something from you know um but other than that i really appreciate you sheldon i'll make it short and sweet we have some music that we can kind of jam out to while you guys exit stage left but you may just end up jamming the whole night um <laughs> One thing uh, the Honorable Jean Augustine said yesterday, and this is not a new thing, but I'd like to just repeat it. Black history is Canadian history. Mm. So as much as we are honored to have the month to celebrate it, it's a part of Canadian history. And the fact that uh, 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 there's a spotlight for this month, it should just give other um, reflections through the remainder of the year that we can focus on making sure that we pay attention to not only the history, not only the present, but plan for a better future. And if people are sitting in front of their computer for two hours without having an intermission or eating your dinner, this is a good sign to me that people are dedicated and invested to what we're going to have going forward. All the way from Nigeria, Arthur, big up yourself. Uh, have a good time out there. Bring back some food or bring back some sort of... So Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to joke about this. I collect shot glasses. I do not have one from Nigeria. <laughs> If you can grab me one from there, that would be that would be blessed. I would really appreciate that. Um, do you want to jump in the music there? Oh, sorry, the panelists want to have to say a couple of words, or or we just said jump straight to the music. What do you want to do? Yeah, yeah. before the music, let's ask any of the panelists any any final thoughts. You know, um, no pressure. You guys are awesome. I just wanted to know if the if if there was any questions, uh, if you know anybody that was listening in, if there was any questions that could. Be asked of us. Yeah, I think uh, Evangeline asked, and I think people, I think uh, you guys did such a good job explaining. And we had real time questions too, right? So, no, yeah. but one thing that they can also do so we have that survey, and in that feedback, there is a space that you can provide your comments, you can provide any questions that you, you know, uh, once <laughs> these things happen, once we close this, you go, ah. Question, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, well, feel free and put that in the survey, uh, and we will be able to reach out to all of these wonderful folks again. Connect to all of us here, that's how we learn, that's how we continue to expand our network. Everybody here, Ngozi, Brenda, Brian M, and Brian H, are talking. 
all mm -hmm. of us here, we are on uh, social media, LinkedIn, Instagram, some of us in Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, you name it. And I think uh, in LinkedIn, and uh, it's usually your full name. So look us up. Uh, and if there is somebody here, there's one thing that I, I, I always uh, see people will reach out to me and say, I'm looking for this person. So please reach out to me. If you can't find anybody, <laughs> I will help to connect you and look out for BMI programs. Currently, we are doing a mentorship program, a cohort, winter cohort. You still have time if you want to register. There's going to be several skill building sessions that we're going to be running um, from now till June. Um, so feel free to please look us, um, look, keep, keep an eye on our website so that you see updates about our events. And I know CCAH, they have millions of events, really, literally, when I say lots of events, I'm not even kidding. This Black History Month, I don't know how many that they did. And they continue to bring this community events that we talked about uh, here free of charge. Guys, come on, what else can you ask for? <laughs> I spotted uh, um, Andrew, you know, um, in the audience. So thank yep. you, thank you, thank you. I can thank you uh, for, for what you do and the support that you give me. Talk about mentorship uh, and you give our community. Sheldon? I think that's it. I think you said it all, cch.ca, bmi.ca, is it? <laughs> Black Mentorship Inc. Black .ca. Mentorship Inc. Go to... <laughs> Uh, find us on find, find our YouTube pages, find our LinkedIn, find us on the street and say hello. Yeah, speaking uh, of YouTube page, we will be putting this on YouTube. We, we're kind of behind, um, but we're going to put all of the events that we've had this um, Black History Month up on our YouTube page. And I'm sure once I share that, I will be sharing with CCH as well so that they can put it up as well. Um, Sheldon, what do you think about playing that music? I think we're ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one before we sign off tonight, get get on your dancing shoes. We have Miss Tina Jarvis, uh, who was part of Rise Above COVID nineteen. Uh, listen to the first part of the song, Evangeline, and I agree this is very timely for this session. And as they say in Sway in the morning, we have nothing left to say. <laughs> well, Thank you finally the end of our party. And we hope that you felt the music stir your heart the way it stirred ours. Now, we hope you feel that you're about to rise above and conquer the COVID blues. So we're gonna end this set with a song by the incomparable Bob Marley, one of my favorites. I hope you enjoy it as we go out.
They got to fill the books, oh, won't you help to sing? These songs of freedom is all I ever heard. Redemption song. These songs of freedom is all I ever heard. Redemption song Redemption song Hey, hey, hey Emancipate yourself from mental slavery None but ourselves can free our minds Have no fear of the time make energy cause none of them can stop all the time oh how long will they kill our prophets while we stand aside and look ooh some say it's just a part of it we gotta fulfill the books won't you help to sing these songs of freedom is all I ever had. Redemption song. These songs of freedom. Redemption song. Redemption song. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Can you hear me? Huh? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, we can. I want everyone to, to take this with them. Shelburne, Nova Scotia was the first place, um, the first settlement of free people outside of Africa and the U.S. Shelburne, Shelburne, Nova Scotia. Okay. Well, now we now we know what we're gonna do. <laughs> this, is, this is when we all that heard it. The top one. <laughs> <laughs> that was really the top one. <laughs> we didn't even know until recently. Um, one of my friends comes from the family of the Black Oils. So that was the first place that they settled. Was oh. sheltered in Virginia. So, oh. Um, yes, so can you put that chat on, uh, answer on the chat? Um, I, we still have a lot of people here. Can you please put that answer on the chat, please? Shelburne. Yeah. If you can type it, yeah. Is it Shelburne or Shelburne? Awesome. Yeah, Shelburne? awesome. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, we're definitely going to look at the chat and look at uh, who feels the survey because we will be giving away that for <laughs> gift card, <laughs> you know, for sure. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Otto. Be safe. Be safe. Have a um, great night, guys. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Sheldon. This was awesome doing this with you. It was right fun. There, you rock. Hey, Dean. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you. Lead with love. Lead with humility. Lead with love. Lead with humility. Go out there and do and be the change that you want to see. You yes, know, um, don't tell me you don't know and you don't know. Well, when you know better, do better. You there know, you so I will say that. Night, well, everybody. Well, good night. God bless. Nice Have a good night.